Hi everyone, Greg Phillips here. I use the newly available Deneb Custom Visual for Power BI exclusively in my partial submission for the Enterprise DNA Challenge 17 on environmental data reporting and receiving some positive feedback. I decided to make a video showcasing how I used uh, Deneb and Vega Lite in my submission. Uh, my goal for this challenge was to gain experience using the Deneb Custom Visual, so I chose to use it only and not to use any standard Power BI visuals. I didn't spend much time at all with the data either, uh, so I won't spend any time on the development of the data set other than to say I included only the air toxins portion of the data set. Let's have a look. I'll flip over to my submission. Uh, what we have here are seven different visuals, uh, all Deneb, uh, text box here, another text box here, a slicer for years, slicer for states, slicer for toxins, a metrics card, and a uh, main visual with a uh, fasted display of concentration by state, sorry, by year and state. And we see that there's uh, interactions happening here. Let's do a, a few here. And we can see here's some neat things too about, about the NEB. So anyway, um, that's the report. Now let's take uh, a look at each visual in turn as we develop them from scratch. Here goes. Uh, before we begin, just a quick note on the development environment. Uh, to start, I took a copy of my C17 submission and deleted all the pages so there were no remaining visuals, only the data, uh, the data model, and the DAX calculations remained. Uh, then, to save time in this video, I created a number of blank pages onto the title text box. Not surprisingly, as Vega Lite is a graphical language for visuals, uh, there isn't an obvious, to me at least, uh, method to create a text box. But seeing as a Vega Lite visual is just a collection of marks, I thought I might be able to use only text marks to simulate a text box. So let's have a look. Uh, so let's add a uh, Deneb visual here. Uh, first thing we can do is to add a um, measure with our value in here. We'll add page title and page subtitle in here. Um, then we choose uh, an empty specification. Okay, um, we flip over to our snippets file and we can use the page title measure in our uh, visual here. Let's just copy text block here, replace that, and that should be, uh, that shows us our code here for um, displaying the measure value. Let's just have a look at the measure for the fun of it here. So there we see it, and I'll use control and the mouse wheel to make it a little bit bigger. So let's make it a little bit bigger here. And we can see how dynamic it is. There we see it's updated. Okay. Um, next thing we want to do is just to uh, look at the position a bit. Uh, we can see that it is kind of centered in the visual, so let's just visualize that by adding a circle mark uh, to show us where the, the origin is. So let's add it, make uh, this visual a layered visual with a text box and um, a circle mark. And we can now see a circle uh, is located at this the origin or sorry at the center of the entire visual. One thing we can do is we can change the position of the origin of a visual and we can do that by um, setting the x and y coordinates. Let's just for the fun of it let's change the x and y of the circle here. We can see that that's now in the top left. Let's change, uh, similarly change the, the X and Y of, uh, actually, I need to grab the entire thing. We've got to change it to a, a text mark, or sorry, use the type for text. So I have to change the formatting just a little bit. And there we go. Now we can see that the text is coming in at the top left. Um, what we want to do uh, next is change the alignment of the text. Now I'm going to grab a block here and we will set it to uh, the alignment here. This is a text mark. 
and we'll set the alignment to left. And again, we can see that that uh, is now aligned to the, the center mark, um, which is at zero, zero. Uh, next thing we'll do is we will copy some of the font attributes uh, into the visual here. So let's just add a few characteristics for the visual to mark. I might have this in the wrong place. No, oh, it's in the right place. Okay. Uh, that's great. Uh, let's now change um, our circle mark into a text mark using our page subtitle and we can alter that as needed. So let's just actually copy the entire mark for text or sorry for the page title. We'll replace um, sorry I'm gonna get the, uh, the brackets a little bit wrong here I'm sure and we'll change that to page subtitle and we'll change that to size 12 see what we have here. Uh, they're over top of each other. Let's change the Y coordinate. The second one, let's make it 20 pixels down. Let's see where that is. Okay. Uh, next thing, let's change the font to italics. Change font style. And we'll change that to italics. I guess it's italic. There we go. Okay. Now uh, we'll go back and resize that visual just a little bit. Okay, great. Um, so that's it for the uh, for the title text box. Let's move on to the report info text box. Uh, so let's add a new Deneb visual. We'll move it up to the left, or sorry, the top right corner ish, and we will add our report info uh, measure. And to here, let's go back to the visual we just developed and we'll copy the JSON code. And we can put that JSON code in this um, in this new visual. Here actually I should have said we should have used the empty specification again. Once we have that, we can replace it with everything here. Uh, now we only have one mark uh, to use. Here, so we don't need a layer and we don't need a second mark so let's get rid of the second one and let's get rid of the layer and let's change the measure to report info and that should be fine whoops what am I missing here uh, got an extra There we go, and let's change the size to 12, and as we did before, for the subtitle, let's change the style to italic. And again, we have that uh, there. Let's change the alignment from left to right. And let's change the um, X coordinate to 380 and now we have that right aligned in there so let's go back to the report and again we adjust the size a little bit until we get the way we want it perfect uh, okay so that's it for the report info text box let's move on to the slicers again uh, Vega light doesn't have a specific graphic for a slicer but like fellow enterprise DNA experts Mutasir and Alex aren't frequently espouse, uh, one can use visuals instead of slicers. So let's try to use bar charts of a fixed size for slicers. Uh, okay, so let's add a slicer for uh, toxins. Let's add a Deneb visual. We'll add in uh, our toxin as a call as a value, and we'll add in our size measure, which is a simple. Uh, equal to one. Let's have a look at that. Again, uh, once we have those in here, we can use a simple bar chart specification, uh, selecting the toxin for the category, selecting size for the measure, 
and there we go. We now have a uh, bar chart, horizontal bar chart. Let me just flip back over here. We'll make it a little bit bigger. And adjust the position somewhat. Sorry, hold on a second. All right, now that we have that there, let's go back and edit it a bit. Uh, we can see uh, what we have here is a bar chart. What I prefer to have is a column chart. Uh, so one way to, the easy way to change it is just flip the X and Y in Deneb. So we do that, here we go. Uh, the next thing to do is uh, we want to, let me see. Um, we want to set the labels uh, to horizontal. Uh, we want to turn off the x-axis. We want to turn off the x-axis title. So let's copy this text block here. We can go to the, uh, the x here. And there we go. Uh, the, so let's do the y-axis now. Let's come over to our text snippets file again. Actually, let's not do it. Let's do the, the pill shape. So we can change the shape of our bar marks. Uh, what we're going to do is set the corner radius here. I must have done it in the wrong place. I'm sorry. Apologies. Head to the bar mark. Sorry, I'm wrong place. This is where it goes. All right. I'll get that out. There we go. And if I go back to the report, you can see now that if I bring that size down, it looks more like a pill. Okay. Let's go back in and edit it a bit more. Uh, let's turn off the uh, Y axis. Let's just add a, a slight little piece for a block for axis. Oops, sorry. Does that the axis to null? Oops. I'm doing it in the wrong place again. Sorry, just hold on for a second. Um, just to the Y axis. Why, what have I done wrong? I'm sure this is right. I spelt it wrong. Oh, I had a comma after it. Okay, perfect. All right. Um, that's one thing you find using uh, Vega Light is that it's, it's very sensitive to the position of brackets and commas. Uh, a little adjustment uh, sometimes is necessary. Let's turn off the tooltip. We'll change that from true to false. And now we can see that uh, there is nothing actually in the tooltip. Excuse me. Uh, next thing we want to do is set the font to red. So we'll add this into the x-axis description. So we have that here. Now the title has gone red. Terrific. The next thing to do uh, is to turn off the border. Uh, we're going to add a transparent uh, stroke to the configuration for this visual. So we go into the config section. We'll add a block. Sorry, add a comma and add a block. And there we see that the border has gone away. And finally, um, the next, or sorry, the last thing we want to do for the toxin slicer is to add a title. So I have a block here, and we will go back to the uh, the code, sorry, the Vega Lake code for the, the visual here, and we'll add a title. And that's right. So let's go back to the report now. Uh, now for the year slicer, let's take advantage of the work that we've already done and copy and paste the toxin slicer 
and make some adjustments. So we'll take a copy here, copy and paste, and let's move that one up a little bit higher. And we're going to make a couple changes here. We'll get rid of the toxin from there, uh, from the field well. We'll add in uh, the year. I'm going to edit this uh, Vega Light code now. I'm going to change the title from toxin to years. We will change uh, the field from toxin to year. And we have just about everything there. Let's go back. Uh, we've got a few too many fields showing here, so let's just pick uh, filter out and keep only the ones we want on the top. Let's say seven, and we'll, we'll sort it by the value of the year. Perfect. Okay, uh, so that's it for the toxins and the year slicer. Now on to the state slicer. Uh, let's try an alternate shape for our state slicer, uh, but we'll start with a bar chart. Let's uh, flip over to Power BI, and we'll add a new uh, Deneb visual. Here, let's change the, the size and placement of it just a little bit. Okay, we're going to add, um, let's see, which will Oh, sorry, we add the site's state code, and we'll add our size measure in here again. And once we have those, we can use a simple bar chart specification. Select a state code for category and size for a measure. And there again, we have a, um, a bar chart, which is kind of like the starting that we'd like to get for uh, our visual. I'm going to change that from a bar to a circle. We can now see that we've got circles instead of bars. I'm going to change the size of the circle. Let's say 2000. Now we can see them better. Perfect. Uh, let's see what's next. Um, we'll come over here. So I set the size. Let's turn off the x-axis. We'll set our x-axis to null. All right. And let's come back over to the report here. And we'll adjust the size a little bit. Let's just move this one a little bit out of the way. Come on, sorry, I missed the edge. All right, let's go back and edit this a bit more. All right, now we want to adjust the y-axis. Uh, I do have a block here to turn off the y-axis title, uh, to turn off the ticks and to turn off the domain. So let's add in this block into the y-axis here. Perfect. And we'll come back in here and just sit in again and adjust the width just a little bit. Okay. Let's go back and edit a bit more. That's not quite done. Uh, as we did for uh, one of the other slicers. Uh, we want to turn off the border um, so we can set the stroke of the domain to transparent. So let's come here into the config section. We had a block here. We've turned off the border. Uh, the next thing to do is we want to set the font to red. Uh, so we'll add this to the Y axis here. Specification for the Y axis, we want to add it to be red. There we go. And next, we want to add a title into our slicer. So let's add a block here. And put that right at the top. 
So there we go. And again, I'm not worried about sizing here too much. We'll adjust that when we have uh, when we make the, the final bit of the report. So, okay, that's great. Uh, it seems to be all the rage these days in media to use vertical pipes as separator between text items. And I wanted to see if I could do that in Deneb Vega Lite. I continue to be impressed with Deneb and Vega Lite. And not surprisingly, I found that if I created three text marks for each measure, I could set the name, separator, and value as I wished. So here goes. Let's flip over to Power BI. Uh, we'll add a new Deneb visual. And we will add in our four uh, count measures. Concentration, socks, and sites, and years. Uh, we'll edit the, uh, sp sorry, we'll edit the Deneb visual. We'll choose an empty specification. And we will come over to our uh, text box uh, snippets here. And I do have a, a layer of three visuals here that we'll grab and we'll paste in. Let's come back over to here. Let's replace the, the standard mark with that. Yeah, whoops, I'm missing something here. I think I'm missing the square bracket at the end. There we go. Uh, so what we have are three um, layered, sorry, we have a layer of three text marks. First one being for category, uh, using the text of the measure itself. The second one, sorry, the second text mark being for the separator, and the third text mark for being the value. Um, just one other thing to note, uh, we do have control over the alignment of each item we want, sorry, of each text mark we want to put in. We have set the alignment of the category to right. We have set the alignment of the separator to center, and we have set the alignment of the data to left. Uh, before we copy and paste and make adjustments for the remaining three measures, let's add and use some parameters to make our setting of the colors easier. Let's add a parameter block for the colors. Let's close this one. I'll add the next one here. So. Copy that block of text. We'll come back over to our code here and we'll add in something here and put a comma after to separate it. So we now have our parameters available. Uh, next thing to do is to update our uh, text marks to use those uh, parameters. So we have three separate blocks we can add in. And this one can be added into the customer, or sorry, the category block. And why didn't I, I put that in the wrong place. Yeah, let's get rid of it from here. Uh, next thing to do, we'll grab the one for separator and we'll place that as well. That goes in after Y. And we'll do it finally one more time for the data. We'll grab this block and we'll put it in here. Uh, sorry, after the data Y. So there we go. Perfect. Uh, next, let's set the card title. Uh, we do have, well, I do have a block here available. And ready to go. We'll put that in at the top of our uh, code. And then now we have our title. Uh, next, we'll use another feature that's built into Vega Lite, uh, namely the bound widget. Uh, we'll put in two. We'll do one for font size and one for vertical gap. Uh, first thing we do is we can add a parameter for um, our font size. And here we go. We'll grab this block. We'll add that into the parameters for our visual. We'll add a comma here to add a new one. Put that in here. Uh, and so there we see we now have the bound widget. So we have the widget. Uh, let's 
do a binding for the value uh, to use that parameter. And what we can do is we can add uh, a block here. I think I have my code a little bit wrong, but whatever. We come after why can't we use that? There we go. And we can add that in if we want to do the rest of them as well. We can add that in and change the size of the separator. And we can add that in and change the size of the data so they all respond. Perfect. All right, uh, let's go on and we will add a parameter for the vertical gap. Um, let's see where I have it here. There we go. And as well as the vertical gap, I'm going to create another couple of measures, or sorry, a couple of parameters for uh, vertical size, or sorry, vertical uh, Y position. So here we come to the end, the last parameter, what a column, a comma, sorry, and add our values in. That's great. Uh, now we come back over to our snippets file and we're going to edit the text marks to use those parameters. So instead of Y just being a fixed value, I'm going to set a specific value to our Y1 parameter. And here we go. Okay, and now we can see as I change the gap that it moves around. Let's add uh, double our measure now, or sorry, let's add another set of text marks. So we might as well copy what we have. I'll copy the category separator and data one. And I'm going to get the brackets wrong here, I'm sure, but we'll fix that in a moment if need be. All right, so let's go back up from the bottom. This is going to be data two and separator two and category two. We're going to change our Y value for it from Y1 to Y2. And let's change the measure that's being shown in here from count of toxins to count of sites. And that's in category two, so let's do that as well. And data two. So now we have our two there. And if we change the gap, we can see that they move. Okay, great. Um, okay, that's it for a simulation of the multi-row card. Uh, we have all the setup visuals now in place and we can move on to the main visual for the report, uh, namely the fasted column chart of concentration by state and year. Uh, to create the main visual for this report, let's modify a simple bar chart. Uh, so first thing we'll do is we'll flip over to Power BI and for this one I have created a few quick slicers that will help us. Uh, to help us in our development effort. I'm going to copy them and we'll paste it into a blank page here. Next thing we'll do is add it to Neb uh, Visual here. Make it a little bit bigger. Fill a good side, a good part of the page. Sorry, I'm having difficulty with my sizing. But there we go. And let's add um, our concentration measure in here. And we will add our state in here, our toxin, and our year. And let's start by using simple bar chart specification. For category, we'll choose year. And for measure, and choose concentration and we can see that we've got a bar chart uh, being displayed what we want to do is make that a column chart so let's flip the X and Y now the column
home chair. All right. Next, we want to set our label axis to zero and turn off ticks. So let's move over to our snippets file. Uh, we'll adjust the x-axis label angle. So we'll add in a block of text here for x. And there we go. The next thing we'll do is adjust the tooltip. Uh, if we come back to our snippets file, we'll see that we can um, set a specific tooltip. I'll grab that block of code. Come back over to here and any place we want in the encoding, we can add that. Oops, we'll click any comma there. And now I've got the custom tooltip. Yeah, as we can see there. Uh, there's lots of extra white space because we got a really long word uh, for concentration in our um, tooltip. Let's see if we can change that. Let's add in a specific title uh, just using a C instead of concentration and we can come back in here. So we have our field uh, designated properly. We can add in a title for it. If we want to change the display and there we go. There's much less white, white space being shown. Okay. Uh, what's next? Uh, we want to add a parameter for font color. So let's go ahead and grab that. All right. We'll add parameters into our file. I don't think we have any, so this will be the first parameter. And then let's uh, use the parameter that we just set. Sorry, I must have had it in the wrong place. There we go. Add this into the axes. All right, so for the x axes, we'll add that. And we see. The X has gone red, now let's add it into the Y. Uh, we actually need uh, an axis block for the Y axis. So let's copy the whole one that we did for X. Let's add that into Y. And we'll make changes. We don't need label angle set. We still do want the text, so we'll get that out. And now, perfect. Uh, the next thing we want to do is add a title. I'll flip over here. I do have a block for the title. Copy that. And we'll come back over here. Paste that in here. And we now have our title. And finally, we're getting to uh, the main part of the visual. What we want to do is we want to make this bar chart uh, specific to each state. Uh, it's very easy to do in Vega Lite. We're just going to add a facet on state. And what I'm going to do here is copy this text block here and we'll paste that down here. And here we see we've got different different graphs for each state here. Let's just flip back over to the report and see what we can see here. So we see Delaware and Maryland and New Jersey and come down here. And we see other states, what's it? Virginia, Pennsylvania, New York. Um, so let's do one more thing. Let's adjust the size of the chart. Uh, so we'll grab another small text block, we'll come in here We'll edit that and put that uh, up the top. And there. Then we go back to the port. Now we can see that it is responsive there with whatever number of states we choose. Okay. Um, that's it for the present, or sorry, for the preparation phase. Now let's put everything together. And from here, it's a simple matter of copying and pasting our development visuals to a common page and setting colors. Uh, let's go over to Power BI 
and uh, what we'll do is we will grab uh, from our text boxes work page and we will grab the text boxes for the title and for the report info we'll copy those paste it into the main page we'll do the same for the slicers select the years select the states select the toxin slicers we'll copy those we'll come over to the main bit main page and we'll paste them there we go and one of the things uh, that we can do now is we can start to adjust our colors a little bit. Uh, I have chosen um, Pantone's color of the year for 2022, which is a purple. Um, we will use that for the background. So let's select uh, uh, canvas background to be our darkest color in our color palette. And uh, what we can see now is that the visuals are not transparent, so let's make them transparent. Let's adjust the position of this first. Let's adjust the position of that. Next. Oops. Not sure why I'm getting. There we go. Okay. So uh, let's set the transparency of the back. Sorry, we'll turn off the backgrounds for these ones. Turn off the background. Turn off the background. Turn off the background. Perfect. I'm just going to save it here so we can come back if we need to. This one we need to adjust the size a little bit and again I'm not sure exactly why it's not sizing correctly but anyway a little playing around that'll be fine okay perfect all right next let's grab our metrics card we we'll come over to our metrics card work page we select it copy and back over to our main page and we will paste it in uh, let's move it around Bit. I'm not sure where exactly. Let's move it around to, let's say, here. And for its uh, colors, um, let's select instead of transparent, let's select a background color for it. So we will keep a background and we won't choose our darkest uh, color, we'll choose another one. And we have a little bit of sizing to do here. I'm not sure why our our visual or actually I know why. Um, let's edit this. We need to set the height. Let's say I don't know 400. I'll give that a try and see how that works. Maybe. Okay, there we go. Perfect. Now let's grab our fasted column chart here. Uh, we select that, copy, come back over to our main page and paste. And we can slightly resize that. If okay, there we go. All right, and again, we will choose our background color for that uh, to be our second wish. Perfect. All right, so everything is on one page now. That's awesome. Now, uh, it's a simple matter of going through and changing our reds for whites uh, to finish our work. So let's go through one at a time. For every visual, let's select it and edit it. And everywhere that I see red, we'll change it to white. Perfect. That's the first one. Let's do the second one. And this is going to be doing the same thing everywhere. This is going to be no big deal. 
for you. It just takes a little bit of effort. So come through here and we'll change the title color to white and change our label color to white. for the states. Change our title color to white. Change our label color to white. For our toxin slicer. Change the title color to white. Change the label color to white. And uh, next we'll do the metrics card. And this is where we start to see the benefit of the parameters. I'm going to change it to white here. I'm going to change it to white there, white there. And now we can see actually that uh, we have control over um, the different colors for the label, sorry, for the categories, for the separator, and for the values. We can choose whatever we want. Uh, we have those in here. We can change the size with these widgets for the fun of it. Let's come over to the, um, the main visual here and we're going to change its color as well from red to white. Perfect. And that's it. Uh, so what have I learned? Well, you can do pretty much whatever you want in Deneb Vega Lite, uh, but like any other tool, it has its strengths and weaknesses. Uh, when viewed from a Power BI desktop point of view, a few insights emerge. Uh, text boxes. Uh, text boxes are labor intensive in Deneb and Vega Lite, at least as far as I've found so far. Uh, I'll continue to use the dynamic text boxes in Power BI desktop at this time, unless there is a compelling reason to do them in Deneb Vega Lite instead. Uh, slicers are specific rather than cascading in Deneb Vega Lite, again. Uh, at least as far as I've found so far. Um, I'll continue to use Power BI visuals for slicing uh, in the time being, but I suspect greatly that either there are configurations I have not yet found, or that the Deneb custom visual and or the Vega Lite implementation will be enhanced with extended capabilities uh, in the near future. Uh, cards as well require increased development effort in Deneb Vega Lite compared with the standard ones available in Power BI uh, desktop. Uh, but Deneb Vega Lite, however, provides enhanced customizations that are not available in the standard cards in Power BI desktop. And so maybe the option of choice depending on the report requirements. Uh, main visuals. Uh, Deneb Vega Lite really shines here, not surprisingly, as Deneb brings an interface into the incredibly rich Vega Lite Grammar for interactive graphics into Power BI. Uh, its flexibility is outstanding and customization is practically unlimited. Uh, one can also leverage the examples of others' work in implementing Vega Lite in other environments as the JSON code is standard and can easily be customized to suit the Deneb impl implementation in Power BI. And yes, a downside to Vega Lite is that it does have a learning curve, but on the upside, the JSON syntax is legible and is easy to understand, uh, and a technique developed for one visual can often be copied as a JSON uh, text block and pasted as is into another visual, and it will just work. Uh, I see a very bright future, not only for the Deneb custom visual, but for the Power BI community as a whole. Uh, what will become a necessary factor, as should always be the case, is being clear and specific about the question that a visual is supposed to answer and the features required in the visual to answer that question. Uh, so that's it. Uh, I hope that you have enjoyed this and you found something interesting. And for some of you, it piqued your interest into exploring the Deneb custom visual and the Vega Lite JSON grammar for interactive graphics. Thanks for watching. Hey everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. 
Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best, take care.